أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول وأولو الأمر منكم أن أعوذ الرمائند عن عبدك العجيس والضعيف والمسكين الظالم والجهال but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence and this life of ours and this way of manners is an immense ocean and not a philosophy. It will be tested and we will be held to account through that testing. And alhamdulillah that they teach us this way of muhabbat and love and ishq and how to love with all your heart and how to have the best of character. And we were describing that the biggest grief for Sayyidina Muhammad was not other religions. There's no problem with Christian people, they have their religion and to their religion their own Jewish people. Everyone has their own faith, no problem. They're free to be under the command of Allah What Prophet despised most was munafiqeen, hypocrisy. And the depth of hypocrisy and the depth of its badness and the depth of its punishment. And on a happy occasion we don't want to talk about punishment but talk about the reality of ishq and love that Prophet holds dear. That when you truly love and your love is sincere and your character in the schools of perfection then when testing comes and difficulty comes, that's when Allah wants to show if the love was true or the love was false. When the love is true, the good character stays. Means how we act in love and disagreement is the most important. So when we love and they were claiming to love, Love the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad It was the hypocrite that caused the most grief, not the outside forces. The outside forces they understood who's going to be attacking. It was the inner, inner weakness amongst that had doubt and then hypocrisy is to say through your lip you have love but as soon as something comes you have doubt. And you go from love to hate within an instant. Love, 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 I hate, ah, I hate. Because the danger of that is that shaitan has overtaken and then begin to be lost within that hate trying to now retribute and every bad character comes from that hate. And that's the danger. That's the danger and that's the opposite of real love. Allah has guaranteed for us testing. So on a path of love and a path of moving towards the Divine, the Presence, no doubt Allah is going to test and see that when you're tested and when you're squeezed, does what come out of you the same as that love that you claim? So always it's a reminder for ourself because it's the polar opposite of this ocean of faith and this ocean of reality that trying to establish within the heart that the immensity of love for Allah love for Sayyidina Muhammad and love for those whom teach this love and bring this, this love of Sayyidina Muhammad into our lives. And when it's so clean and so pure that no matter what happens in life and who our companion and friend or yar and who accompanied us on that way, means they gave to us that love, they accompanied us with that love. How could if something be done for you to have and enter into a state of hate? You're upset, you're angered, it's no problem. But it shouldn't affect the heart. Your mind baffled, how did it happen? Your being goes through whatever it has to go but the heart never enters and should never enter into a state of hate because it loses its faith and that's all the shaitan wants. So these are shaqeen, they've been through many tests, many encounters 
with other shaykhs, with other believers, with all these different types of categories. And Allah always testing their heart that through every difficulty their heart should never enter into a state of hate, remorse, sadness that how you put so much effort onto somebody and in an instant they turned around and hated you. They go from pretending to have love and then next instant they have hate and you put an effort, you put whaiver people do but imagine shaykhs whom they put their nazar, they put their, their du'as, they give their ta- talks and lectures and no matter what happened in our own lives, we can only talk from our own experience that the heart was never in a state of hate, was baffled, bewildered, what kind of test was that? But the immensity of the love for Sayyidina Muhammad no problem. And that's why the muraqaba and tafakkur is so important, it gives you the taqwa. The taqwa is a consciousness. When you're conscious of Allah through your hearing, through your eyes, through your breath, through your touch, all your senses, when it's been trained in real taqwa of Allah that it has a consciousness of Allah it has the immense consciousness of Sayyidina Muhammad and that anything out of this love that whoever you sent me just to teach me two words about your precious being, I owe them my life. They throw a rock at my head then I say it came from you, no problem, the lump will hurt a little bit, I put medicine. But how can love become angered and hate, say, the one whom gave me that, that love and taught me about your love and your presence, perfumed me with this, this ishq and this love, whatever happens in the way is no problem. I'm sure that the greatness of the prophetic soul will make everything to be good and that's why the path is going to be tested. And what Allah says throughout the Qur'an that He loves, Sabirin. Hashimash? Why Allah is so dear to Allah to have sabr? Because I'm testing you. If you're going to lose your faith in two seconds, you, you, what was the purpose of that love? You're showing Prophet what kind of love was this? Inside your being has to be an immense gratefulness to Prophet that you sent me people along my path in life and each one they taught me a couple words. Maybe I sat at their oasis for one week, two weeks, five years, ten years, twenty-five years and whatever happened to me no problem because at least I got to drink from that oasis, it made me the man I am today. Had I not had that opportunity what would I be? Or like any other thug on the street. This is not a, it's not a coincidence, this is a gift from Allah And everything with that immense love said, Ya Rasul Kareem, whatever it is no problem, I'll take whatever thorns on my path because it's not philosophy. So it happens every day and everyone's thinking, oh that's a story of thorns but this is different issue, <laughs> right? You don't put it back to the story, you say, no you wronged me. You crazy at this, you that, but oh no, this path was thorns and Allah was just saying, this is one of those thorns, watch out, watch out. And that's why when you have meditation and tafakkur, immediately you wash, immediately you go onto your carpet, immediately you put your head onto the ground and say, for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Rabbi give me sabr and this too will pass and time is a great healer. Because over time the anger goes, shaitan is trying, trying, doesn't work. And why Allah then describes, I love sabirin. Because when you're sabir Allah's waiting, are you going to explode? You're not going to explode? He kept it, kept it. Instead of a fire that came out upon people, Allah turns the fire and Mawlana Shaykh described, take your anger and swallow it. Don't let it to come out ever. If it's a small burst, no problem, 
but put it back in, <clears throat> swallow your anger, go on your sujood and cry unto Allah and remind yourself for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad people were giving their lives. There was no life insurance for family and children to be left behind. They just died and, and they ran to their death. Why? To guard the honour and the life of Sayyidina Muhammad because they could never imagine seeing him in a difficulty and in a battle that would be of a day. They would rather die than to see that. That was ishq and love. And then Allah give for us to have sabr. Why? Because as soon as you have sabr, time will release the difficulty and the sadness. And Allah replaces it with a new darajat and new maqam for the servant. The issue that was making you go crazy, Allah make you to even forget that because He's raising you. Like He'll do on Yawm al-Mashar and, and the judgment day. What do you think Allah's going to do with judgment day? Say, so and so wrong me, I want my hisab. You think Allah's going to then go to that person, rip them to pieces? Allah's going to say, okay I heard your case, look there. This is what you were getting, this shack over here, that's what your amal got you is this shack. But look over there, and you look over there and say, do you want that? Say, yes. Are you willing to forgive? Say, alhamdulillah, of course, for that. <laughs> shack or that? Say, of course, then take it, be happy. It was going to be resolved by God anyways. They're going to beat people, that would be horrific trials. He did what? Bring him. <laughs> but all, all the teachings is you'll be offered, you'll be offered a, a recompense. Allah said, just say, here, you didn't deserve that, you deserve this. But because this difficulty came to you, I'll give you this. And Allah then says and describes for us those whom turn their affairs over to Allah so why do I want to take retribution like a criminal? Why I want to take money? Because you have three rights, eye for eye or go get money and recompense for it, I want to be paid. Or the third is they turn their affair over to Allah and Allah is the best to keep a hisab. And those whom are sabreen in dunya. The difficulty comes and they cry and they ask Allah let me to go near to Prophet Rasul Kareem, Ya Habib al Azim are for the broken hearted. And they find themselves in the sujood asking just to be at the feet of Sayyidina Muhammad and say, keep me on this path, let me to die on this path, keep me with patience, keep me with good character, fill me with nazar and your light into my heart and when the student and the person or insan has patience, Allah fills it with light and the lights of faith. And that light and light of faith begins to give them sabr, sabr, sabr. And what comes with Sifat al-Sabr is Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mustafa The name Ism al-Mustafa is the 99th name that is the dress of sabr, the fragrant and beautific one. When they were saying, Mustafa, Ya Mustafa, because that's the key to sabreen, that their ishq for Nabi Mustafa that name opens within their heart sabr because the light of Prophet comes to give them tranquility within their heart that just, you calm down. Bring yourself back down and then say, for you say, Ya Rasulul Kareem, no problem, no problem. Inshaallah you find me to be patient, you find me to be patient. Now you took the dress of Nabi Mustafa you're Mustafiyoon if there's such a word, you have a beautific Mustafa dress. And as a result Allah is perfecting that dress with sabr. And then the shaykhs have become sabreen. And they have that Nabi Mustafa tajalli which is a beautific fragrance and that was the reality of the bukhur we said. That when they're so fragrant and so patient that Allah put them in a condition like a fire 
And because of Nabi Mustafa's reality upon them they're like a bukhur that Allah ignite the heart with the difficulties and fire and their sabr and their patience is like a atr that hits it and the world enjoys its beautific energy and fragrance. Like when you burn oud, oh oud was happy, it was a plant making zikr of Allah So why you cut me from there, dried me and put me on fire? So because you smell good, <laughs> right? So Allah said, say like that, why well, you can't be at least as nice as the oud? Let me cut you, let me dry you, how about a little bit of burning so people can enjoy you? <laughs> Someone just tuned in to be like, wow, what's that? <laughs> you have to listen to the whole talk to understand the whole package. But inshaAllah make us to have, inshaAllah grant us from Sabirin. And that Nabi Mustafa to dress us and perfect us and give the character so that we can be real ashiqeen. That in whatever difficulty through our patience it never entered into hate, it never entered into retribution and attack and, and all the horrific satanic characteristics then they lose their dunya and akhirah because Allah is for no value. Then Allah showed that person, look what you had. Yeah, you see that? Yeah. Well now you've got his shaykh because <laughs> you go downwards. So our life is about going upwards, having good character that Allah to forgive us and grant us more and more of Allah's majestic might and majesty and Allah's ridha and satisfaction. Ilahiyanta maqsoodi wa ridat maqloob. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha.